I'm Rufus and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial video. Today, I'll be showing you how to build an efficient drowned and trident farm in Bedrock Edition. This is the third version of my Ice Castle drowned farm. This farm now uses a modular design that is suitable for both Sim 6 and Sim 4 worlds. And in fact, you can use this farm on any world you play on. On Sim 6, this farm produces over 2,000 drowns per hour, and on Sim 4, over 1,200. Importantly, this farm is so efficient that it cannot be improved by using portals. For its size, it's better than any portal-based farm can possibly be. This farm will produce drowns, fish, and squid, and so you can get out of this gold, nautilus shells, ink sacs, raw fish, and bones. And in 1.17, the Cave and Cliffs update, drowns will drop copper instead of gold, and so you can use this farm to farm copper as well. So before I get into showing you how to build this farm, I want to explain the mechanics of the farm and how it gets its excellent rates. The first decision you have to make when building a farm like this is location. If you want to maximize your rates, build your drowned farm in a frozen ocean because frozen oceans have the highest rate of spawning drowns. 48% of the spawning attempts in a frozen ocean will produce a herd of drowns. What this means is that a chunk in a frozen ocean will average over 500 drown spawning attempts per hour. The next feature that this farm has to maximize rate is that its spawning platform uses two layers of water. If you only use one layer of water in a frozen ocean, your drown spawning rate will be 14%. You need two or more layers to get the 48% spawning rate. This is because one layer of water only counts as a surface spawn. You need two or more layers of water to have an underwater spawn. While drowns can spawn as a surface mob in one layer of water, they are competing with other surface mobs like zombies and skeletons for spawn attempts. So with two layers of water, they are only competing with fish and squid for spawning attempts and so they spawn at a higher rate. So if you want to get the maximum rates out of your drown farm, you need to use too high water. What's also important about this platform is that we are using bubble columns to push baby drowns and fish and squid up into the flowing water, which then pushes them into the center. So by combining bubble columns and flowing water, we get a pretty efficient movement of mobs into the drop chamber. To kill drowns quicker, I am using turtle eggs to lure drowns into the trident killer. Drowns are attracted to turtle eggs, and if they can pathfind to them, they will try to stomp on top of the turtle eggs and destroy them. Coral fans and campfires makes drowns think that they can stomp on the eggs and actually run to the center of the farm, but instead of reaching the egg, they fall into the trident killer. By making them run towards turtle eggs, they are dying quicker, and this increases the efficiency of our farm. So the reason why this works is that drowns see a coral fan as a solid block and so they'll try to walk on top of it. And they also see campfires as an air block like a torch and they try to walk through it. So then what happens is drowns try to walk on the coral fan and fall and if they try to jump they bump into the campfire and they fall down as well. So I've run this farm for over 40 hours and I haven't lost a single egg during that time and so I think this combination of campfire and coral fan is very reliable in this farm. So in case you're wondering where all these stars are coming from, I have a behavior pack applied to this world that drops a star whenever a drown dies. So that way I have a more accurate way to measure the rates of this farm. In order to maximize rates, we also want this farm to be able to spawn drowns during daytime as well as nighttime. However, because drowns are surface spawns, they do not spawn underneath solid blocks. And so we can't use something like cobblestone to make a roof on this farm to block out sunlight. So the solution that I developed is to build the roof of this farm out of regular ice. Note it has to be regular ice, packed ice, and blue ice doesn't work. Ice allows sunlight through, but it also decreases the light level by three. Sunlight has a light level of 15. This first ice block lets light through, but it has a light level of 12. It continues on. The next ice block, that has a light level of nine. The first water block has a light level of seven. And then the bottom water block has a light level of five. If you look at it from the side, a similar thing happens. Um, light level comes in 15, 12, 9, 7. And so this is also spawnable next to these two blocks. 
over here in the center of the farm, we have light level 12. Um, below that, 11. Then 10. Then 9. And then going over 7. So all of our spawning platform is, has light level of 7 or below. So this is all completely spawnable based on light level. So the one complication of this farm is that ice itself, although it is not solid, it is a spawnable block. And so normally if we had a plain ice roof, that roof would be the surface spawn location. But if we put buttons on it, those buttons block the spawning on the roof and allow it to transfer through so that the soul sand is our surface spawning location. Now you don't have to use buttons here. You can use um, leaves, glass, trap doors, even cake. Any of those will work uh, for blocking the spawn on the ice and letting it pass through to the next level. To increase the productivity of our farm on Sim 6, we are using five separate density check areas. So imagine you're standing in the middle of this. All these slabs represent the ticking area around your player. The black stone slabs, that represents the edge of the farm. So these are the chunks in which mobs instantly to spawn if they enter them. The warp slabs, those represent the location of our five drown spawns. So if you can tell there are four um, chunks between them and this allows them to each have an independent density check area. So any mobs that spawn in the middle farm will not affect any of the farms on the outside. And likewise, um, the farms on the outside won't affect each other. Now, if you want to add on creeper farms, you can place them where these crimson slabs are. And so this also sets up where none of the uh, creeper farms interfere with one another. Now, because the creeper farm is using only cave spawns, they will not interfere with the drowned farm and vice versa. Well, you can place the creeper farm below the drowned farm and get five of them. Um, I've opted in my design to keep them up top in order to simplify the item storage. So last mechanism that I want to talk about is a drowns detection range for a turtle egg. So what you see here is an example of our one chunk spawning floor in the ice castle. And I've turned on my chunk visualization pack to make that clear. So in order for a drowned to identify a turtle egg and go towards it, it has to be within 10 blocks of that turtle egg. So if a drowned spawns on the green or closer, he's gonna move towards the turtle egg. However, if he spawns on the red, he's not going to seek out the turtle egg until he wanders a bit. So once he wanders a bit, the egg will be in his detection range and he'll seek it out. By restricting this farm to a single chunk, we are sort of fitting in as much space inside this detection region as possible. And so by doing this, nearly all of the drowns that spawn in this farm are gonna be able to instantly seek out the egg and move towards it. So in the description of this video, I'm gonna post a world download. So this world download contains the Sim 6 farm that you see here. It also contains the exam an example of the Sim 4 farm here. And if we come over here, it contains an example of an iceless ice castle. So this is a version of the ice castle that uses little to no ice in it. So if you don't want to use ice, um, you can come over here and see how it's designed. You can also use stone. Thank you, Davy. You can also use stone. To help you build the ice castle, I have also created a Structura model. If you've never used Structura before, it is a program by Mad Hatter, Dr. AV, and Fawn Unicycle, and it creates structure blueprints that can be imported into your world through a resource pack. If you want to use the Structura model to build the ice castle, download the MC pack from the description of this video and import it into Minecraft. From there, all you need to do is go into your settings, go down to global resources, click my packs and enable it.
So once you have the pack enabled, you'll be able to log back into your world and make the blueprint appear where you plan on building the ice castle. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. I've gone ahead and gathered all the resources that I need to build one module of the ice castle. So this is the list of all the resources you need to build one module of the ice castle. I also put this list in the description to this video. Um, you will need a lot of ice to build the ice castle, but luckily because we are building in a frozen ocean biome, there's a lot of ice around. You will need to use regular ice for the majority of this, and that is because of the properties we discussed earlier. I've also gone ahead and built a platform so I can AFK at Y equals 200. This puts me far enough above the ocean so that I can AFK here without um, any mobs below interfering with the rates of the farm. Now it's important that you chunk align this platform and the ice castle itself if you're planning on building the full Sim 6 farm. Now if you want to use the structure model, you want to build out a little bit from your platform like so. So we're on the northwest corner. You want to come out over here and you want to place an armor stand on the center of this platform two blocks away from your AFK platform. So if you do that, if you look up, you see that we now have a um, image of our farm in the sky. And um, this image is at the right height for building the um, ice castle above your AFK spot. And so the other thing that you can see with this is if you shift right click on the uh, armor stand, it will change the pose of the armor stand and also change which layers of blocks are being shown. So you can use this to um, go up and down and build one level at a time. This is extremely useful. So I'm not actually going to use Structure today, but I will place a link in the description of this video to the MC pack that you can use to get this image into your world and more information about Structura. Structura is a really cool technology and I'm really excited that it exists for Bedrock. And I'm also really excited to see what the future holds for it. I've gone ahead and mapped out how the ice castle looks relative to the spawning platform and the chunk. So in the center, these four blocks, that's our Trident Killer location. The green block is where the egg will eventually be. Around that on the outer side, that is our full drop chute. So these nine blocks here, that's our drop chute. And so everything else is main spawning platform. So as you can see from this layout, our turtle egg is located at the eighth block um, in both the X and Z directions. It's going to be above the northwest block of the Trident Killer. The Trident Killer itself is going to be in the southeast corner of the drop chute. The first um, part of the farm that I'm going to build is at Y equals 226. So to do that, I'm going to grab some dirt, scaffolding, ice, and a button. Come over here, I'm going to break this carpet. I'm going to place 26 scaffolding. Should be 26. So if I go up here, I want to be at 226. I'm going to place three dirt here, and this is going to signify the mouth of our trident killer. Next, I'm going to go out five blocks all the way around with ice. One, two, three, four, and five. So what we've built now is our lower platform. 
This is going to convert mobs from a three by three um, drop shoot into a two by two trident killer. Next step we're gonna do is we're gonna place the water here. So we're gonna place down a ice block and break it. And then we'll put a button there to keep it from freezing while we work. Now, now, if you've made your platform correct, you should have water flowing in all the directions, but not um, covering the two by two in the middle. Now that, uh, now that this bottom platform is built, I'm gonna add eight more scaffolding. Six, seven, eight. And so this is now gonna get us um, up to the top of the farm. So eventually the top of the farm is gonna be up here. But for the next platform we're gonna build, I'm going to come over here and um, go up one. Okay, I'm going to increase the size of this lip. So I'm going to cover our water and leave a three by three hole in the middle. And so that's going to be the drop chute. Now that we have our water covered and our three by three um, drop chute, I'm gonna expand this platform out so it becomes 20 by 20. So the next layer we're gonna build is our soul sand layer. And we're gonna cover the chunk in soul sand and we're gonna add a two wide um, border of ice around it. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and um, build up the next two layers of um, ice around our spawning platform. Now, it's very important that these blocks are ice. Now, if you built the walls of this platform out of something like stone to block light, that would also block spawns on the edge of the platform. Now, to get maximum spawn rates, we want to use ice because ice both blocks light and um, allow spawns to still occur. So the next step is on top of the soul sand, you wanna place a layer of temporary blocks that you will later break. So I'm using slime because it's cheap and easy to break, but you can use ice here. Um, you can also use dirt, um, any sort of thing that's, that's easy to break, sand if you have it. So you'll need about four stacks of temporary blocks. So you wanna place one above every uh, piece of soul sand.
Now before we place the water down, I'm going to set up our drop chute. So to do that, I'm going to place a temporary block here and then ice. So this is the block on which our eggs will be. Break that. And then around here, I'm going to do two layers of open fence gates. Next, um, one more layer of ice on the outside. So there's one more step we need to do before we place our water down, and that's put a lip around the outside of ice, and so this is gonna protect our water from freezing in the farm. Alright, now it's time to build our water streams, and we're gonna put some temporary blocks here. This is to um, protect our water and make sure we don't make an infinite water source. Come around here like this. So you should have something like this around the farm. So you have two blocks to the right of every corner. And then we're going to take our ice box. We're going to fill in one uh, more time. So we're going to come back around. We're going to break these ice box. And that's going to make water for us so we don't have to carry buckets around. Don't touch there so I don't create a water source I don't need. Okay. Now I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna punch all this water to create um, let's make sure you don't punch too much because it's going to make it really hard. Do what you want to do. So now that that's done, your water stream should look a bit like this. Flowing into, from every corner, the trident killer. So now, so last little bit, we're gonna break these blocks. Um, and if we did it right, these should not fill in as water sources, which means you, um, which keeps the flow going correctly. Okay. So by using these blocks in the corners here, we've made a water tray uh, that doesn't create um, an infinite water source. So everything um, still flows in the middle and looks great. So our next step is we're gonna break all this slime and that's gonna give us our second layer of water.
So all of our temporary blocks are removed. We have to do a couple more steps to get our bubble columns in. And that's gonna involve creating some water sources. So we're gonna go back to our ice. Come over to the corner and we're gonna break it. Come over here and under each of the spots where we had temporary blocks, we're gonna break ice as well. So that, now as you can tell from our bumpy ride, we now have our bubbles in. Now that all of our water is in place, I'm gonna finish off the roof to the farm. Before we finish with the roof, we gotta come over here to the northwest corner. You can see our pumpkin down there. So we're in the northwest corner. We're gonna dig down right here a couple blocks. Take our ax out. Dig down a couple blocks till we're at the uh, uh, top layer of bubbles. So 2.30. And we're gonna place a piece of packed ice here. The reason why I'm doing that is because in some locations, it doesn't happen everywhere you build this farm, but it can happen where you build this farm that because of the way the physics are in the game, a mob that spawns here at the corner of this block is going to get pushed into the ice and not into the farm. This only happens at this corner and by blocking spawns, by putting a piece of uh, packed ice there, that is going to um, keep moms from getting stuck in this ice and decreasing the rate of your farm. So now I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna place turtle eggs. So four on the middle, one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to get ready and play Soul Campfires. So I'm using Soul Campfires because they will not melt the ice. And so this protects sort of our farm um, as we place the campfires down. So one, two, three. Get your shovel and click on the Soul Campfires and that will turn them off. One. Don't place one above the egg. Two. And then our last three. One, two, and let me go around on this direction. Place three. Click on them and they'll get rid of the soul fire. Now I'm gonna fill in the rest of our roof here.
And then I'm going to take down our scaffolding. So we do not need it anymore. Um, so now where the scaffolding was, we now have a hole in our water stream. And so to, to fix that, we just need to place some blocks around it. And that'll fix the water streams. I just had to break these. Go on this side to do it. So the water will help us. Now I'm going to come down here, I'm going to break this scaffolding. And I'm going to get our coral fans out and I'm going to put a ring around the arm. And one last thing I want to do. Come up here. and repair um, this button. And so that is our spawning platform all complete. We have placed the soul sand, we placed the water, we've surrounded it all with ice, we've placed all the buttons on the roof, we've set up the campfires and the coral fans, the eggs down there. So we've covered everything we needed to do. The only thing that's left is to build our trident killer. So to start building our trident killer, I'm going to remove the dirt blocks and this will give us an opening for mobs to fall into. And then I'm going to take down the um, scaffolding a bit. One, two, three. I'm going to put a ring of regular ice around the um, area. So around the um, drop shaft. So next, I'm going to place uh, some packed ice around like this. So I'm going to use packed ice as a solid block and this is to continue the theme of the ice castle. I'm also going to place some temporary blocks in the corners. We'll get rid of those later and I'm going to then place observers. So that they face the temporary block and their output points into the packed ice. Go down again. And now here I'm going to place pistons. underneath the packed ice. Now I want more packed ice under the temporary blocks. Then I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest with packed ice. Here is, and then below this I'm going to put in blue ice like so. Break this so I can go down. And then I'm going to take this down so I can rebuild it. So I'm going to make our output come this way. And 
So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to build up again with scaffolding. Come up here. So our output's going to be from there. Build some scaffolding over so I can work better. Come over here. I'm going to break through here so I can work a bit. That's going to be open. So this, I'm going to put packed ice. This, I'm going to knock out. And we're going to put a stair there. Work my way around. Here, I need to put a button on there. So this will stop water. I'm about to have water there. Come over here, and um, place piston there. That'll stop water. From there and let me go ahead and start that side part. So we're gonna build a um, etho hopper clock on this side of the trident killer. will be a piston here and then another packed ice here that one needs to be cleared this needs to be packed ice and this needs to be packed ice put a rail there paired her here to uh, dust there and then a repeater on one tick finish off the hopper clock, we're going to put a redstone block there and two hoppers here. So that is done. We can break our temporary blocks back. And I'm going to put a lever. So I can turn the clock off. So I'm ready to start. I'm gonna put 24 redstone dust in here. So now we have 24 redstone dust in the hopper clock. I'm going to finish off replacing these temporary blocks with rails. And now I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to make a temporary infinite water source. And then use this to um, waterlog this piston. 
this piston and this uh, stair. Fill this up with dirt. That piston, that stair should be waterlogged. This piston should be waterlogged. This piston should be waterlogged. This stair should be waterlogged. This piston should be waterlogged. This piston should be waterlogged. And this stair should not be waterlogged. Last thing before we go is I need to place a trap door there. Pile up, and I'm going to fix this water leak by finishing off the platform. We don't need that temporary block. Okay, turn you on. Toss in our two tridents. Then we're toss in our two tridents. And then fill it in. So packed ice. Regular ice. The last little bit is I'm going to put in some right I'm going to put in some regular ice here to point our drops down. So that's our farm completed. If you stand down here at the AFK platform holding a looting three sword, anything killed by the tridents up there will count as if you killed them with looting three. And so you can get uh, maximum drops out of this trident killer as you can see down here. So far the only thing that's missing is item transport and storage and I'll let you figure out how you want to do that. There's one last thing I want to talk about before we go. Combining the ice castle with a creeper farm to create one big super farm. As you can see, I've placed creeper spawning towers around the drowned farm. That way I can produce gunpowder while I'm AFKing the ice castle. I've even managed to fit 16 spawning floors between the AFK platform and build limit. I could have placed one tower under each ice castle, but instead I'm using this design because it simplifies item storage. So this combination works because the drown farm is using the surface cap and the creeper farm is using the cave cap. So that way, whenever a drown spawns, it spawns as a surface mob. Whenever a creeper spawns, it spawns as a cave mob. And creepers and drowns do not interfere with one another's spawning rates. Now I haven't measured the rates of this creeper farm, but I imagine that it will produce several thousand gunpowder per hour. The ice castle itself will produce over 2,000 drowns per hour on Sim 6. It's over 80% efficient. Now, some players think that the only way to produce an efficient farm is to use nether portals. However, farms that use both the overworld and the nether have a maximum efficiency of 50% because you have to use two players to load both dimensions. But if you have two players, you can also load two separate farms. 
So the only way that adding nether portals improves a farm's efficiency is if you're starting with a very inefficient farm design or if your farm is so big, it's inefficient on a per chunk basis. So I guess this is my way of telling y'all to think about other ways to improve farming efficiency than relying on nether portals. So if you have any questions, please ask in the comments or join my Discord. Also, check out the description of this video. I'll post some links there to world downloads and a structure or a pack for this farm. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please be sure to like the video and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. So I'm Rufus. Thanks for watching. Here it is.